What a thrilling life awaits you. The acquisition of knowledge is a sacred activity. A truly educated man never ceases to learn. The future is in your hands. The outcome is up to you. This BYU Forum Address with J.W. Marriott, Jr. was given on April 3, 2012. Brothers and sisters, it's my pleasure to welcome you today to our University Forum. My name is Brent Webb, and President Samuelson has asked that I conduct this forum today. Our speaker today will be J.W. Mil Bill Marriott, Jr. We are pleased to welcome him and his wife, Donna, to Brigham Young University. The title of his address is From Small Beginnings. J.W. Marriott, Jr. is executive chairman-elect and Chairman of the Board of Marriott International, Incorporated. His leadership spans nearly 60 years, growing a family restaurant business to a global lodging company with nearly 3,800 properties in 73 countries and territories. This building we're meeting in today was named in honor of his father, J. Willard Marriott, also a friend and generous benefactor to the university. Brother Marriott grew up in the Washington, D.C. area. At an early age, he developed a passion for the business, working in the family's hot shops restaurant chain during his high school and college years. He earned a B.S. degree in banking and finance from the University of Utah and served as an officer in the United States Navy. In 1956, uh, Brother Marriott joined the company full-time and soon afterward took over management of the Marriott Group's first hotel. Today, approximately 300,000 employees wearing Marriott International name badges are serving guests in Marriott-managed and franchised properties throughout the world. Marriott International has consistently been named to Fortune's list of most ad admired companies, best places to work, and top companies for minorities. Brother Marriott was recently released from his calling as an Area 70 in the Church, and he just celebrated his 80th birthday last week. He is married to the former Donna Garf. They have four children, 15 grandchildren, and seven great-grandchildren. Would you please join me in welcoming Brother Bill Marriott to Brigham Young University? Thank you for that warm welcome, and thank you for those kind words. You know, my dad started this business as a restaurant chain. He had a little restaurant in Washington, and his favorite stories were all about restaurants. And uh, the one I'd like to tell you today is probably his favorite one, is about a young man who came down for breakfast in the hotel dining room, sat down, waitress approached the table. She said, what will it be? He says, I'll have some eggs over easy and some kind words. She went back to the kitchen, and after a long wait, she finally came back out, set down the eggs, turned around to walk back to the kitchen. He said, hey, what about those kind words? She put her hands on her hips. She looked at him, and she said, don't eat them eggs. <laughs> Well, good morning to all of you students and faculty. Every day, our Marriott Associates welcome three-quarters of a million people to one of our hotels around the world. Today, I want to share with you our story and a few things I've learned about making the most of our opportunities. But first, let me welcome you to another Marriott, the BYU Marriott Center. When the Marriott Center was dedicated on February 4, 1973, Ben Lewis was vice president of the university. He drove my dad here to the building for the dedication, and they parked by the front door. Dad asked Ben if it was okay to park in the no-parking zone. Ben said, well, of course, your name's on the building. <laughs> After the ceremony, they came out to get in the car. It was gone. 
towed by the campus police. I'm sure some of you had that same experience. The next day, the New York Times ran a story about the car towing, barely mentioning this beautiful new building. The headline read, a million dollars, but no free parking. <laughs> well, it's wonderful to look out at you this morning. So many bright, eager faces, young minds. For me, coming to BYU is like a homecoming. Both of my parents, my wife and I, went to the college at the other university, a little bit north of here. But too, <laughs> too bad. But now there's, there's hope. Two of my kids, Debbie and Stephen, are Cougars. Eight of my great-grandchildren have graduated from BYU, and several are here today. I want to thank President Samuelson and the faculty for the opportunity to be with you. We're honored to have the Marriott name on this beautiful building and on the Marriott School of Management. And we're very proud of the university's focus on ethical decision-making and devotion to our shared values. My family feels very strongly about supporting education. We contribute to the BYU, the U of U, Cornell, San Diego State, Michigan State, Purdue, and many other universities. We do this because we believe education provides the tools necessary to achieve new heights and provide much needed leadership in the world. Supporting education is one of the three missions of our Marriott Family Foundation. Today I want to talk about having a purpose in your life and career and how that will make you more successful. I say that from my personal experience, I've seen how Marriott has grown and been profitable as a company because we've been faithful to a purpose bigger than profits. Through the years, we've developed core values and a culture that I believe gives our company an edge over the competition. This morning, I was thinking about a famous comedian who once said, he wakes up every day and hugs his pillow when he remembers he doesn't have to get up and go to class. <laughs> I also hug my pillow every day that I don't have to get up and go to class. But I still jump out of bed to go to work, and I count my blessings for the career I've had with Marriott these past 60 years. The Marriott story has its roots right here in Utah. Six of my great-grandparents crossed the plains with the pioneers and helped settle the Salt Lake Valley in the 1850s. My father was born in 1900 in Marriott Settlement near Ogden. As a boy, he worked as a farmer and a sheep herder and served his mission in New England. After his release, he visited Washington, D.C. On his way home, he was impressed with the city, and he vowed that he would someday return and start a business in Washington. He worked his way through Weber College and then the U. He graduated and married my mother in the Salt Lake Temple in June 1927. They left Salt Lake on their wedding day and began their journey to Washington in a Model T Ford. It took them 11 days. When they arrived, they opened a nine-stool A&W root beer stand. When the weather got cold, they added hot dog, chili, and hot tamales and hamburgers and called their little place the Hot Shop. My dad was an entrepreneur before Ray Kroc and Dave Thomas were flipping burgers. My mom and dad were selling food fast and hot. They continued to grow their restaurant business until 1957 when they opened their first Marriott Hotel, Twin Bridges in Washington, D.C. I started working for the company in 1950 at our Hot Shop restaurant in Salt Lake while I was going to that red and white school to the north that I know you all love. <laughs> My first job was a soda jerk. After a year, I had finally graduated to run the deep fat fryer. I loved the pace of the busy restaurant and decided I wanted to join our restaurant company when and if I ever grew up. After I graduated from the U, I joined the Navy, served two years as an officer on the aircraft carrier USS Randolph. It was the end of the Korean War, and they still weren't calling young men on missions. Finally, in 1956, after my service in the Navy, I joined our family restaurant chain. Six months later, we opened the Marriott Twin Bridges Hotel. And three months after opening, the hotel was struggling, and I asked my dad if I could take over this latest venture. He said, what do you know about the hotel business? I said, not very much, but I know as much as anybody else around here. Now, 56 years later, we have 3,800 hotels in 73 countries. 
Last November, my daughter came to my office after a trip to Dubai. She was briefing me on her visits, and I began reminiscing about how far the company had come. When I think that my parents started with a root beer stand, we now have beautiful hotels in all parts of the world, and including some places you've probably never heard of, like Irkutsk, Siberia, a hotel I will never visit. <laughs> but I am simply blown away by where we are today. I always said my philosophy of business was more. I guess I got what I asked for. And explained to my assistant, Phyllis Hester, the company had become too big and complex for me as a CEO. She said, well, it's your fault you made it that way. Well, let me give you for just a minute an idea of what it's like to run a global hotel company. We have frequent business reviews, which start at 8 o'clock at our corporate headquarters in Maryland with a video conference call to Hong Kong. At 9.30, we talk face-to-face -face with our new Middle East president in Dubai. By 11 o'clock, I'll be getting a business reviews from our European team in London. At 1 o'clock, the Ritz Carlton executives from our luxury brand will be in our boardroom for their business review, and at 3, I'll hear from the America's team. We'll go around the world in eight hours. That's a lot of fun, but also very big and very complex. The thing I love most, however, is visiting our hotels. I generally try to see between two and 300 of them a year. So far this year, I've been to hotels in the Caribbean, all over the U.S. I'll be visiting properties in Europe and China in the next two months. I also love looking for opportunities in new markets and pushing to get deals in places where we could have more hotels. We have thousands of associates and executives focused on developing hotels around the world. These hotels have come a long way from the Marriott Twin Bridges Motor Hotel, where the front desk clerk who worked in a drive-up building would check you in from your car, and a bellman on a bicycle would lead you to your room. That is, if he didn't fall down on the ice. But in many ways, it's not that different. The bottom line, it's about taking care of our customers, and that hasn't changed. It's a strong competitive advantage for us. Recently, a group of BYU students set out to measure the financial benefits of corporate culture. They chose to examine the hospitality industry, and they looked at the cultures of Marriott, Hilton and Starwood. I'm thrilled with what they found. They reported that the culture and brand identity of Marriott helped give us a 2.8 percent higher occupancy rate and an additional $12.80 per room in room rate over our toughest competitor. This means our brand and culture added an estimated $100 million a year in income. The students also found that our associates were more productive and that we had a 35 percent lower employee turnover rate the in, than the industry, both of which added to the bottom line. I want to thank these students at the BYU Marriott School of Management for helping us quantify what we have long believed, that our Marriott spirit to serve not only makes us a better company, but also enables us to take better care of our associates and our guests. I hope all these students earned an A. You all recognize it's a brand new world out there. Jet travel long ago replaced that Model T Ford my parents drove across the country. And rising incomes in China, India, and Brazil, not to mention in Europe and the United States, have created millions of new global travelers who want to see the world. In 2012, the travel industry will hit a big milestone when a billion people will leave their homes and visit another country. My dream, of course, is to have them all stay in a Marriott, a Courtyard, or a Ritz-Carlton. When we sell a hotel room in New York City to a Brazilian, it's an export. There is a great demand for people around the world to visit our wonderful country. That's one of the reasons we've worked hard to convince Congress and the White House to get a smarter visa system so that it's easier to visit our United States. My daughter, Debbie, who graduated from BYU class of 79, has been my campaign aide. We've made real progress with the Obama administration which announced recently they'll shorten the wait times to get a visa to welcome millions more international travelers to America. This means more jobs. One new job is created for every 35 visitors who come to this country. Just as important, we know that coming to America changes people's minds and hearts. They literally fall in love with America, and that's good for our diplomacy in the world. Travel expands your horizons, as you who have served missions around the world know so well. We're at the threshold of a golden age of travel that will create tremendous opportunity and help grow the global economy. 
Already, travel and tourism is a larger contributor to America's GDP than the automotive industry. That world of opportunity takes place in our business every day. Many of our senior leaders started at Marriott with the company when they were your age. Bob McCarthy worked his way up the ladder from his first job as a waiter at a Marriott Steakhouse when he was in college. Now he's chief operations officer for our entire company. Erica Qualls started her career with the company 18 years ago, answering telephones on the night shift at one of our hotels. To say she's the general manager of the 1500 room Atlanta Marriott Marquis, our third largest hotel. That's what I love about this job. We pride ourselves as a company where the pathway to promotion is open if you work hard. That's one of the reasons we keep moving up the list of Fortune's best places to work year after year. Each one of these people is proud to say, I am Marriott, as you'll see in this short video. I was born and raised in Ghana, in West Africa. I'm from Sri Lanka. I'm coming from Tunisia. Trinidad and Tobago. I'm from Panama, and I've been working for Marriott 15 years. I'm working for Marriott for the last three years. Five years. 13 years. I came to Marriott because, first of all, it was a name familiar to me from back home. I'm at Marriott because my mother knocked on the door of the Mexican Embassy for a recipe for chili and hot tamales. I was back in 1927. It was the beginning of our global business. My grandmother was the driving force, a true pioneer. We're a global company and we have hotels all over the world. So we say, Salam alaikum in, in Arabic, Salut in French. And all you have to do is just walk into one of the units and you'll see diversity in, at, at its best. You'll see the United Nations. And of course, hola in Espanol. Marriott is unique that it's created an environment where people feel special and they're able to do special things. I'm working on building more Marriott's around the world. As an operations manager, I oversee the front office and the housekeeping department. I'm the brand manager of the Town Place Suites brand. And I started uh, part-time with no intentions of staying with the company. 16 years later, I guess it gets in your DNA. I've worked on transactions in the Caribbean, Europe, in Asia, in Africa, transactions that span the globe. Being part of a family is so important. We truly care about each other and our guests as well as our communities. Marriott is one family, so I feel like a family when I'm working there. That feeling of unity and family is what keeps people staying in the company if you're an employee or coming back if you're a guest. There's one saying in Italian, it says, the mondo è bello perché è diverso. Uh, that means the world is beautiful because it, it's different. I represent Marriott. I am Marriott. I am Marriott. I am Marriott. And I study in film Marriott. I am Marriott. I am Marriott. In Sinhalese, Mama Marriott. We we are Marriott. You know, when Mr. Marriott came to my hotel, I opened the door and I said, Mr. Marriott, good morning. Welcome to my hotel. <laughs> Well, our success stems from the opportunities we create for our associates and the experiences we help create for our guests. Right now, we're building a hotel in Haiti, which will create 200 new jobs and help rebuild their devastated economy. The thousands of Haitians associates who work in our hotels in Florida, New York, and New Jersey were thrilled when they heard this news. With a new Marriott, we're helping that country announce once again we're open for business. Eighty-five years ago, my parents created the culture of opportunity, which changed the lives of hundreds of thousands of people. It wasn't easy. They opened their first restaurant just before the Great Depression. My mother counted the sticky nickels from the root beer stand. But working together, they grew their business one nickel at a time. They based their hard work on the principles established by their pioneer ancestors, and they created a culture that is the foundation of our business today. We are a company that believes you should put people first, pursue excellence, act with integrity, embrace change, and serve our world. Those values will never be compromised, even though many things have changed in our business. Today, people tune to the internet, to their mobile devices to book their reservations. They expect high-speed wireless internet in their rooms and lobbies. 
Our brands use Facebook and Twitter to engage with our guests. I've even learned how to blog in order to connect with our associates. But the basics remain the same, and that's taking care of people and delivering memorable experiences. It's helping our guests be more effective when they have business meetings. It's providing great food, a superior sleep experience, and public spaces to gather, socialize, work, and have fun. In a survey of opinion leaders and global travelers in China, India, and Europe, and the United States, we've learned that people believe that international travel is considered more important than the internet, TV, movies, or political diplomacy at breaking down cultural barriers. Eight out of 10 people said the more people experience other countries and cultures, the more peace will spread, and 96% said travel and tourism stimulates their country's economy. <clears throat> this is a great business, and I, for one, would rather inspect a hotel on a Saturday morning than play around a round of golf. It's the reason I'll always stay involved and why I've never learned to play golf. <laughs> people ask me, what's the secret of your success? And I think about my grandchildren, four are currently here at BYU. What advice should I give them? Well, here's an attempt at the Marriott recipe. M is for more, more satisfied customers, more opportunity for our associates, more return for our investors, and of course, more hotels. A is for ask and for act. I've always tried to hire people who are smarter than I am, and that's never been a problem. I ask a lot of questions and I listen. Almost all the great ideas at our company have come from our team. If I had not been willing to listen and act on their ideas, I would not be standing here today. R is for respect. We have no time for arrogance. Be humble. Respect others, regardless of their ethnic background, and you will have an unbeatable team. The second R is for recognition. Recognize people for their contribution. I write hundreds of personal notes of appreciation every year to our associates and our customers. I try to say thank you as often as I can. I is for innovation. We were the first hotel company to develop a guest loyalty program, the first to develop and acquire multiple brands. We have 18 today. Innovation continues with more exciting lobbies and guest rooms and leading technology. O is for opportunity. The driving force behind our core values is open the doors to opportunity for all of our associates. It also stands for the opportunity that comes from taking risks, like building our first hotel in Asia in 1989 and starting many new brands. T is for tenacity, the tenacity I learned from my parents. My father always told me success is never final, and he was never satisfied. The last T is for time. Don't waste it. Make every minute count. And with that thought, I recognize it's almost time for me to sit down. But before I close, I want to say something I feel very strongly about. Our family's success has been possible because my mother and father based their hard work on the foundation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The church has had an overriding influence on our steadiness and success. It has influenced the way we do business, how we see each person's potential, and how we care about their happiness. The Savior set this example, and each one of us should try to emulate his life. Let me end with one final piece of advice. I know that many of you are probably concerned about how you will balance time and your future. My advice is put the family first, and then the church, and finally your profession, and then rely on the Spirit to guide and direct you. Above all, find something you really love to do, because unless you're excited about going to work every day, you'll just be filling in the hours. It won't be fun, and if it's not fun, you'll have a hard time achieving the success you so richly deserve. Thank you all for being here today, for listening to the Marriott story. It's been great to be with all of you. This BYU Forum Address with J.W. Marriott, Jr. was given on April 3, 2012.